I like Morbius as a character, like Jared Leto's portrayal of Morbius more than I like the actual movie. I liked the first viewing of it, but mm -hmm. when we when we think about the movie, I just couldn't help but think how linear the movie is. And I didn't necessarily like Milo that much as a character because to me, he had too much of a Joker complex that I couldn't unsee. Did they cut stuff out of this movie or something? Cause <laughs> yeah. it's just happening. It's so many questions just like, I was yeah. just like, bro, this don't make sense. Like, I guess. There's already a template on how to do these types of movies. Yeah. So I just don't, didn't expect it to be this low. I don't know why. I don't know why I always record the actual episode first before uh, I do the intro, but it just seems like that's what always ends up happening when it comes to this podcast. But without further ado, man, welcome back to the Why I'm Geek show, man. This is episode 59, episode 59 in the building. And today, as I can see, we talking Morbius. But before we get into that, we have to talk about what's been going on in the film, anime, TV world. And uh, yeah, let's get into the news without further ado. All right, so first things first, we still have some backlash from um, the whole Will Smith, Chris Rock debacle and Basically, Will Smith had to resign from the Oscars or from the Academy to be specific. And we knew this was coming. At least I did. Um, not because he necessarily deserves it, but it's just one of those things like a PR move or whatever to, you know, show, I guess, respect to what the platform does, I guess. I don't know um, the whole I don't know the whole semantics behind every thing in, in the Academy, because honestly, I never really watched the Oscars. I always just waited to see, you know, when the actual list came out of like who won for what and things like that. And even some even then, sometimes I don't even do that, you know, because most of the time they get it wrong. Right. But in this case, they got it right. Will Smith, I will say that. Um, but yeah, Will Smith had to resign. This man really, he just can't win in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know a lot of people probably are like going crazy on uh, on Jada as well, just because that's just what people do. You know what I'm saying? But um, she even said like, yo, like, you know, he shouldn't, he didn't, she didn't necessarily want him to slap Chris Rock. Um, but you know, it's just like, dang, like in, in either situation, Will can't win, bro. <laughs> At some points, that's what it feels like sometimes. But I feel like that was more so of a wake up call to everybody. But I don't know. Still, it's still wild out here in these streets. But that's all I got for that. Um, As far as any other news, Morbius drop, obviously. And then we got Sonic 2 and, and Ambulance coming out this weekend. Um, Also, we got, you know. Morbius that drops weekly now, so that's gonna be super dope. Um, I said Morbius, I meant to say Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight drops on Disney Plus um, every Wednesday. And um, as far as like DC news, I didn't talk about when this initially came out just because I don't really got all the facts. I still don't got all the facts, but um, I did see something where uh, basically Ezra Miller or the Flash in um, the DC EU universe. Um, has gotten arrested and now they are looking like as far as like what his future is going to end up being because you know he was wilding but uh that's still it's still like everything's still like i guess under an investigation i don't want to speak too much to that but i did peep that you know everything involving the flash is pretty much coming to a halt you know i was expecting like when we saw um that little teaser way back when when they had the uh, DC fandom that the movie was pretty much already going to be done but as far as like what the future looks like past that movie specifically because I don't even know if that one's specifically done they said it wasn't finished yet but I haven't seen anything said that they finished it um, but you know that his future is not you know necessarily in the best light at this moment we'll have to see how like court plays out but you know obviously they the the board i guess or whatever at dc is going to have to take that into consideration when planning the rest of these movies and shows out so um yeah man that's that's really wild um but that's pretty much it for the news this week man nothing too crazy 
Um, I really wanted y'all to just get into this conversation I had with the homie Chris. Um, Chrissy Light, all his links will be in the description as always. Um, but, you know, we, we go into a conversation about Morbius. You know, we always do this for uh, when uh, the newest Marvel movie comes out. So I'm excited for y'all to hear this conversation. I think it went really well, to be honest. I, I know I probably say that all the time, but, you know, this one felt like, felt good. It felt good to get back in the groove with things. But without further ado, man, let's jump into the weekly recap. What's good, y'all? We back. Got my dynamic duo, Chrissy Light, in the building. Chris, say hey, what's good? What's good, everyone? Glad to be back on the the pod. Glad to talk about some Morbius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, know, anytime Marvel movie come out, Chris got to come on the pod. We got to talk, bro. Got to talk. Um, so to start off, man, I figured we would just, you know, kind of just talk about the movie in general, like our, our initial thoughts on just what we thought and maybe like we'll get into a little bit more of like how our opinions might have changed since we first initially saw the movie because mine it definitely did so because yeah, um, we saw it like last thursday or friday it's been like at least five yeah. days yeah it's been a little uh, minute yeah yeah so i started off so initially uh i wasn't i was entertained by the movie you know, um, but I did find myself like in the midst of it, kind of not zoning out, but just realizing like, OK, this is not like. Amazing, like <laughs> I kind of thought it was going to be this is kind of you, you were leaning in the movie. You looked invested at one point. <laughs> yeah. Like, leaned back. yeah, like because it was more so like the discovery phase, like that's like usually my favorite part of like superhero movies. And once we got past that, I felt like the, the movie actually like kind of started falling off because like when you got like a superhero movie and you have like, uh, you know, a backstory, that part of the movie is usually the easiest part, right? Because, you know, you have everything that you need in as far as like, there's no necessarily like room for error. But once we start getting into like plot and making things like start to make sense like it's that's where i felt like the movie started falling off for me but you know that's that's just where i'm feeling with it how about you chris i'm not gonna lie i'm i really liked it mm -hmm. after watching it mm -hmm. and you know as we we have a normal discussion with the the movie crew right the movie club. I, yeah the movie club i like the first viewing of it but mm -hmm. when we when we think about the movie, I just couldn't help but think how linear the movie is, and it just reminds me of so many like a normal vampire story. Right. So if I take away like Marvel and superheroes, like it to me, it was just a straightforward vampire origin story. Mm -hmm. And if this wasn't associated with Marvel or anything, I would just think it's like a vampire movie, like. And that really knocked it down. But my initial viewing of it sitting in the theater, I did think, oh, this isn't too bad. Mm. But when I step out of it and kind of grasp and realize all the movies I've seen in the past, yeah. I just can't help but be like, yeah, this is normal. This is basic. <laughs> yeah. But I did enjoy it, like watching it. Right. But right. that doesn't help it when you, you know, think about it more and more and more. Yeah, so that's my initial stuff. Okay, because I think I think that's normal though. Like I think it's normal to like go into a movie expecting to like it, right? And even with me, like like you said, like I was on the edge of my seat at some portions of the movie, um, mainly because those are the portions of the movies that I think that they got like perfect, right? Because for me, like yeah. when I left out the movie, my initial take was that I like Morbius as a character and like Jared Leto's portrayal of Morbius more than I like the actual movie. You know what I'm saying? Because like you said, like it's, it was like very linear, um, had a solid backstory, but I feel like the pacing was kind of off when it came to like the transitions into like, you know, what, what characters should be thinking versus like what actually happened. You know what I'm saying? So like take for example, like when, um, you know, when Morbius or Mar what's her name, Martine, 
Yeah, Martin. Martin. Yeah. yeah. They would just like be going back and forth between the lab and another hideout with no recollection for like anything else happening outside the world. You know? Yeah. And it was just like it was just what at first seemed to be a crime scene turned into just like nah everything's everything's good nothing happened here you know like it was just like weird bro and it was i kept noticing moments like that you know so i just felt like it was one of those things where i was just like bro like it kept happening if it didn't keep happening i probably wouldn't have like thought it was a, a problem but it was just like you said like it was super linear and i just know oh, so I you noticed that head. when you were watching it like yeah when you were watching the whole movie you were mm -hmm. just like okay i'm noticing this within the movie okay yeah yeah so like moments like that you know what i'm saying what about you like this does, does that what does that say to you like i i, I definitely believe you, you got something going with the pacing mm -hmm. and maybe it's because like well, I think they did a good job of just explaining it, like how this is happening, how Morbius is Morbius, where mm. we're going to now, why the villain is doing what he's doing. It did feel like we're going through all these motions really, really, really fast. Uh, we're going in international waters. Okay, now he just jumps off the the, the boat. All yeah, like it's everything is very, very fast. But then it kind of it makes sense, so you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, you're like, dang, did they cut stuff out of this movie or something? Because yeah. <laughs> it's just happening. It's happening. It's happening. And you're like, whoa. Like, you, you, I don't think I noticed it when I was watching it. But yeah, thinking back, mm -hmm. that pacing is very, very fast for a story. But I thought, okay, this is how they introduce vampires. Right. Like, okay, this is now he's back here. Cool. Okay, now this is the villain setup. Cool. So it made sense, but. It was very, very fast. Like a, they throw a mm -hmm. lot of stuff at you immediately. Like I think in the first ten seconds or so, or not maybe not ten seconds, but in the beginning of the movie, there's already that artificial blood, and he's already done yeah. that research. And you're right. like, okay, oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so yeah. I agree with you. That pacing is is kind of it's rapid. It's yeah. a rapid pace. And I think that lends to like the whole point of. Kind of it's just it was a lot of non factors in this movie, right? Like they have big names in this movie, um, from you know Tyrese, to Michael Keaton, hey. right? You know, hey. like they these are people who you would think will have like a substantial role in the actual like movie, right? But when it comes to characters like uh, Simon Stroud, which is Tyrese's character, who was like basically a fed, um. They show up to kind of like wrap up what we just saw, like as a viewer and kind of just like mold the story, but they have no impact on what's actually happening. Right. Yeah, like no, no real impact. Mm -hmm. Like only and one time when they first initially met. Yeah. That was, that just was to the put some time. little, like some little pressure, like, Ooh, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to get you. Yeah. Like they're going to, they're starting to put the pieces together. Right. And Cause like the whole issue with um, this thick, like with the cops and Morbius um, initially is just, there's a, there's a, a murder investigation, right? Because of um, what happened in, in the lab on the boat. And that led to them investigating um, Horizon Labs. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, and that led to like the initial chase and him and, you know, Morbius being on the run. So, there's things like that where it's like you know, you would you would think that you know the police would have some impact as far as like having more of a role than just wrap up duty you know like they don't get me wrong they had like some funny lines here and there when they was pressing like some of the side characters like Martine and 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 stuff like that but when it came to like when you look back at like their actual impact on the whole story it was kind of just like a non factor it felt like the only real like characters that were even involved in the world was basically like morbius um the the main antagonist that being um uh, milo milo and then martine which is the love interest you know so like and that's... and even the love interest part like mm -hmm. they, they kind of rushed that at the very end too yeah for sure yeah i think i think with that part it was like 
we all we all understood going into that moment like okay there's like an underlying tension here right but for him to just get brolic and now all of a sudden you want to make your move you know like it, it was no, just, he was like hey, it's time now yeah. I, like, I guess i mean right sure. you know like i mean he probably wouldn't even nah i ain't gonna say that but <laughs> I don't know oh, if he yeah. would have survived initially. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Based off based on how, how sick he was in the in the movie. Yeah. Um, so like that's probably that's probably why. But like for the different motives um for Morbius to, you know, not only just attack and go after the main antagonist, other than him just going on a murder spree, trying to, you know, um quench his thirst i guess um it was just like one of those things like okay like i, I knew this was going to happen as soon as it you know happened right like i was just like bro like this and, is and i think really what could have helped the movie a lot is mm -hmm. like you said it, it, they had like that murder mystery element to it mm -hmm. if they would have had it like really put the emphasis that morbius doesn't remember a lot of the stuff and he's like oh my god i'm doing all this stuff well right. i must be blacking out more often and then it leads to, oh, actually, towards the end, his buddy became a vampire, you know? like, right. And he's like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize that. I was wondering why he was acting funny, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they could have done a really good dynamic with Morbius trying to put the pieces of what he's been doing together. And then the police trying to chase Morbius, only right. for it to flip on its head that Milo is, was behind the whole mm -hmm. stuff. And then that would make it like the movie even better because then you can go rewatch it knowing that Milo was the bad guy. But right. they kind of show you everything completely. Mm -hmm. So then even when you have bringing those uh, police into and the detectives into it, you kind of already know it. And even they mm -hmm. know it. Right. Yeah. Like, so, I was it's gonna like say... you already know the pieces and you're just watching it and you're like, right. all right, it's just a straight path of, Okay, Morbius is gonna have to fight Milo, and oh, yeah, I guess yeah. he's gonna get with the girl. And it's like, yeah. all right, Tyrese, I guess you're just in here to look at the recordings of, oh my God, it's Milo. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that because I, I was gonna say, um, with Milo, it was, it was something where it's like they had one conversation about it. Like once Milo understood, like how. Um, Morbius became Morbius in a sense, like how he cured, quote unquote, cured himself. Um, it was just like, okay, obviously, you know, okay, he's going to take the serum, right? Next. Yeah. Um, but I do think that if they had more of a discovery phase for him as a character, like how they did with Morbius in the beginning, it would lend more to like, okay, I can see him being just as like a villain you know, for the sake of, um, for the sake of the movie, right? Because for me, I didn't necessarily like, uh, Milo that much as a character. Like once he took the serum and became like a vampire or whatever, because to me, he had too much of a Joker complex that I couldn't unsee. It did felt so unnatural. Like they yeah. were just like, oh, we're going to try to make this guy cool and stuff like that. And it's just right. like, this just doesn't feel like the character right and i mean i'm not like the biggest historian for uh morbius but this is just like how i'm feeling after watching the movie you know because i feel yeah. like with milo um it was more so like a thing where it's like we saw one instance like it, it, this happened in multiple cases not just him or like his character arc or whatever we saw one instance of him kind of raging as a child and from being like upset just because of the situation that not only he's in but um morbius is in as well and just seeing that one little outburst and that justifies him becoming a villain later yep. on you know and and um, many movies try to do that that one yeah. little spot just so they can be like yeah this is why he's a bad guy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it was just like for him to have this big manifesto at the end of the movie, um, explain like why he's doing this and like him fighting Morbius and Morbius. I never really felt like he fought back. Like I felt like he was more so just taking all the hits in a sense. And, you know, uh, 
Milo was just getting getting his his rap off, but like for me, we didn't like he just we talked about it like y'all talked about it um at the end at the end of the movie when we when we all left was like how we had a discovery phase with Morbius, but it seemed like you know Milo just knew how to do everything off E. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like the assumption that just because he's straight up drunk blood, mm-hmm. that oh, I'm I'm I can beat you up in it. I'm I'm faster or stronger or something like yeah. that. Because it was just weird. It's like how is he? But so good. Morbius at this? did the same thing though, initially, because he didn't. Have, I mean, but 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 they when they the first substitute. fought it, when they when they On first the fought, um, Milo was hitting them. You're just kind of mm-hmm. like, how? Like, yeah. isn't he trying to get accustomed to fighting like this? Mm-hmm. I, it was just like, oh, wow. well, Milo is just better. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Oh, how? <laughs> yeah. I don't like his saga either with the like whole, like, I'm going to leave my cane here. And then like, I snuck this blood in into the jail somehow. Like, there's just so many questions. Just like, I was yeah. just like, bro, this don't make sense. Like, I guess, okay, we can rock out like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, and um, I think the jail escape was like, it was just like ah okay i guess and, like, and that's what i'm saying if they didn't show like that stuff and then yeah. like morbius is like i can't believe i do this i did this but they're gonna like sentence me i'm just gonna break out and everyone's mm-hmm. like yeah morbius is bad he can't control his powers right. this guy like the cops are gonna be like this guy's like a a, a, a superhuman freak now we gotta mm-hmm. go get him right. and then morbius struggle with like i'm a fugitive now i'm a vampire mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he realizes like, oh my God, it wasn't me. Like, oh, I'm missing a vibe. Like that would have been more better than him just being like, right. oh my God, he left the cane here. <laughs> Milo. And then he jumps out the thing and immediately confronts Milo. <laughs> like, yeah. Like it just never happened. Like, like it was just like meant to be. Like he just knew exactly where to go. And I was just like, yeah. Bro. Like, and even, even let's talk a little bit about the powers, right? Because yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, like one of my one of my quick takes hot takes was just like this was like a worse venom movie right because spicy it, yeah because it was just like the the bat powers is cool i think that's cool and like how tactical you can be with that as far as like his senses and things like that but as far as like the way that he travels other than those moments that you know he took like flight and stuff like that it just gave me a lot of venom vibes because he was just destroying the buildings climbing from things jumping like um like i don't even know like just jumping like venom like how venom jumps from building to building you know it was just like one of those things where i was just like okay i feel like i've seen this before but at the same time this is new because i like of the echoes that was happening off of his body yeah. i think that was cool i like, like that it, like just the effect make it made mm-hmm. it seem different but yeah. like the movement felt similar to something like that. Mm-hmm. yeah and then um it was too much limo it was too, too yeah much i mean did, did you really feel like you saw like fighting in that movie no like yeah you, you just kind of no. don't you just feel like it's like a shoving match yeah, shoving or clawing that mm-hmm. just swipes or swiping like just yeah. air at each other, mm-hmm. and you don't really see like, like at least like Shang Chi or something like that. You know, they have some fight scenes, and you're like, right. oh, actual hand to hand combat. Yeah, yeah. And, and this one, you kind of just feel like you you, you quickly rubbed around and, and saw a fight. Yeah, it's like, like uh, it's like a dash off. Like who can dash the best? At yeah, who's point? dashing? Perfect, perfect <laughs> example. Um, yeah, and I feel like as far as uh. The actual slow-mo itself like it was cool initially but i think it is a better um i think it's better if we see morbius fight against anything other than a vampire but it's like, kind of like after seeing this very true other than a vampire yeah. but like can you place this morbius into like another movie and that character feel good because feel powerful yeah, because, like, would we be watching it with Morbius fighting slow-mo again? Like, that's going to be weird. Or is he just going to be, like, you see him like a dust thing hitting something? Mm. Like, I, see, like, I, I, think, I don't know how it'll be outside of Morbius, the movie. I think it's going to end up being more so, like, of him being 
a more tactical hero in a sense uh, okay. where like he's never really fighting the big big bad right of it he's more so just like fighting against kind of like just how batman is fighting against the minions and then coming up maybe like with the plan or something i don't know like because his powers itself like going up against otherworldly threats yeah you know it, it doesn't seem like he's going to be that huge of a factor but his mind is a different story you Very know true. okay I, so I see what you're saying. yeah that's why i feel like like anytime they wasn't fighting each other i enjoyed those fights more because it was just like okay he can actually show off what he can do you know yeah. rather than it just being like a, a dash off see who can be faster and just like i'm gonna just be slow-mo with everything you know like yeah. i i felt like i liked the character as far as his his powers uh more so and how it affects the rest of the world and like that aspect of it more so than see him fight up against the main villain yeah. which is why it's a that's another knock for me honestly but i think the bat bending was cool i didn't coin that the, term but the what <laughs> bat bending the the echolocation version of thing no like, like the, whenever he, oh, uh, when he was doing the comedy, like, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bat yeah. Bending. oh man yeah i didn't coin that term but it was i thought that was cool you know well so how what would you like rate this movie then after all that? Cause I know we were trying yeah. to be at least critical without like just being slamming it or being overly mm. positive, like, yeah. you know, kind of a- analyzing it, but what would you um, rate this after a few days of it marinating? Yeah. So initially coming out the movie, I gave it a seven because I felt like it was like an entertaining movie. Like I was just like, okay, like I like what I saw, but like with anything in any other introduction type of movie, you know, it's going to have its flaws because they still have to build that narrative and build that story. But after thinking about it and talking and having conversations and like doing my review for it, it's going to be a six for me, bro. It's going to be a six. Okay. Yeah. And I usually That's don't go that low because I usually like the movie that much, but I didn't necessarily like, like that much. This one like that. Well, it's rare for a Marvel movie to be that low. And, and, I, and, you know, exactly what you said. It's kind of rare for a Marvel movie to put something out like mm-hmm. this. I feel yeah. like they're past this already, but, you know, maybe it's because it's in association with Marvel. Mm-hmm. But, but I just feel like there's already a template on how to do these types of movies. Yeah. So I just don't, didn't expect it to be this low, you know, mm-hmm. like. Yeah. I feel like there's a level of quality they have nowadays, and this one just did not reach it. Mm-hmm. So, what is your um, rating for it? You gave it a six. I mean, <laughs> deep down, deep down, I think it is a six because I did enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's probably a five. It's <laughs> it's probably a five. I'm not gonna lie. Like, oh, we. So I'll I'll give it a six because I enjoyed it. Yeah. But it's more like an enjoy one time enjoy. I probably would not watch that's this the thing. movie again that's the thing that's what yeah. that's what changed my mind because it's like with movies like the best comparison i can bring to it is like how i felt coming out of it was uh eternals right because oh, coming out okay. of eternals i felt very conflicted in what i watched right yeah. but with this i wasn't as conflicted like i just knew i was like okay there's portions of this movie that's good Right, that I felt like if it was built around a different story or a different scenario, that this could have yeah. been better, right? But with Eternals, it was just like one of those things where it's like, okay, we got a lot of information, but not a lot of information was very like kind of like useful, you know? Yeah, like like Eternals was like slow, mm-hmm. but had important details to the entire universe, right? But this one was like fast and mm-hmm. felt like do i really need to watch yeah. this <laughs> right yeah You're like like so I which would one watch, do you like better yeah I, like, I would watch eternals again you know what i'm saying but i don't think Just i would watch the first way movies. more important yeah. right way more important right but deep down when you watch eternals i was kind of dying i was like this thing is going mm-hmm. slow and then when you finish it you're like yeah you probably have to watch it do i want to watch eternals again i probably fall asleep i'm not gonna lie yeah, but, but and and I would watch it again 
like yeah. for the fact that like if something else was going to come out i was like okay i'm gonna i want to see this again but like for the next Morbius Morbius. movie i don't need to do that like i know like exactly. I, would you be hyped for morbius 2 no no because i think i think the whole era of trilogies as far as like characters trilogies is over i think it's gonna be after like the initial um introduction movie or story origin story movie i think marvel is going towards more of the combo so like com combining oh, okay. characters together right um yeah that, especially when it comes to characters like like morbius who aren't like top tier of like just the mythos of marvel and, and you know who people know the most especially with like iron man and captain america being gone you know in a sense um but i think i think when it comes to to morbius it's it's the sony verse that's kind of messing things up for it because for me it's on like the bottom tier of that oh, bottom tier yeah because as far as like factors and like how they can affect the world because unless there's like a, a a worldwide problem with the disease or like i'm trying to figure out ways that morbius can become viable for the rest of the universe and at this point there's nothing right but we still have blade to come out um they mentioned venom they mentioned spider-man like in this uh movie with like just like the murderer and things like that because i don't i don't even know how that affects it but you know i it, feel like it just seems so wacky how they would mur you feel like with this movie they'd have a better segue into another movie but it just feels like hey Morbius is available to throw into another movie if you guys want to. Ooh, right. Spider Man, you want to throw him in Spider Man? You want to throw him in Venom? You want right. to throw him into Blade? And you're yeah. kind of like, um, sure. Like, we'll just have him as a side character, like, right. like the Vulture. Like, right. And even the he's Vulture. He's up for grabs. Like, yeah, even the Vulture. I wasn't, I'm not as big of a fan of the Vulture as everybody else, bro. I think the Vulture is kind of whack as a character. Maybe not so much Michael Keaton being an actor because like i haven't seen um what was that homecoming i think it was homecoming right like i haven't seen that movie in a long time oh okay i was like no nah, i've seen the seen movie no nah, i've seen it i've seen it but i'm saying like i haven't gone back and watched just because spider-man movies aren't really streaming like that you gotta like actually go get yeah. them but um even then like i'm curious how you know I'm curious how like these two are going to connect because I guess we could talk about the, like the end credits now because uh, sure. we had two, but you know we see that Vulture is not only now in this universe, but also is going to team up team up with uh, Michael Keaton at some point, which leads to um, me thinking that Morbius is going to be more of like an anti-hero versus like a straight up just like. I'm here to save the day, which is kind of how like the type of vibes that I got at the end of the movie anyway. But what what was your thoughts on it? I mean, uh the big the big reveal was the fact that the crackling or whatever you want to call it from mm -hmm. Doctor Strange, it was able to move that vulture from the Marvel universe into the Sony verse or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and then now that is affecting uh the outcomes of what was that movie called? Um, the Spider-Man movie. Home, no Way Home or Homecoming? No, yeah, No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, it has more effects than we in initially thought. Like the, yeah. the villains didn't just return home. It has mm -hmm. way more effects. So hopefully they that also brings into Multiverse of Madness that there was more effects and probably the sorceresses are like, no, you mm -hmm. messed up, Strange. You really did. Right. Um, compared to how it made it seem like it's a nice little bow at mm -hmm. No Way Home. <laughs> Yeah. So with with the vulture out and about, and now Morbius getting together, somehow they're gonna jimmy some plan to get back into the uh, Marvel universe. I'm guessing, or they're gonna merge with Venom in their universe. Like, I don't know, cause I don't weird. I don't know what vultures are like. 
motives is at this point other than like like as in, in the initial movie like everything he did was apparently for his family right so his family's not in this universe if he's not even like a known person in this universe yeah like what does that really do and the crazy like thing motive. right but the crazy thing was like he realized that he's in a whole different universe that was was wild no like he just knew yeah and like i i think what you said was true um was how you know the the crackling in the sky was not only not only sent people to the main universe but also sent other people to other universes yeah. and this could only be for a short time just because you know we don't know it's we don't know exactly like when this happened as far as like the like we got we got a just timeline of things but like we don't know how much time is going to have to pass before you know he might end up getting sent back to the main universe but you know maybe yeah. when he comes back he'll have a different type of tech with you know morbius being a bat person him being a bird person like he might get some more, you know what I'm saying? Extra powers or something. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Maybe but, make him tougher. Yeah. But I think. I and just I had, I don't I had know to ask angle. you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Because the angle is weird. Yeah. We are. We still have like the Loki end mm -hmm. in the background happening. And remember with like Wanda and the Loki um end scenes like when you merge them together it kind of mm -hmm. happens at the same time with the right. timeline splitting up mm -hmm. so now we also know dr strange's thing happens like at some point all of these coincidences have to like merge right yeah and yeah. it it, it kind of makes you wonder okay so we got timelines and now we got two different universes like official mm -hmm. and right. wanda hearing like the voice of her children somewhere else like mm -hmm. what when is this gonna merge like what are we like kind of like what are we watching what are we what are we, what are we, we what is this leading where. us to yeah yeah i don't know i don't know because is, like my my initial take early on before all these movies started dropping was that um it was leading us to either galactus or secret wars right but those two things are starting to get fewer and far between because like initially with Eternals coming out, I was like, oh, this is perfect. You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what we're going into. But now um, with, you know, these other movies coming out and just seeing how there's like now there's a council that, you know, Doctor Strange is going to have to meet with that seems to be um, outside of like just the normal like universe and like timeline. Like yeah. it might be in the outside quantum realm. Time yeah yeah like it might be might be there and um, we still have the ant-man movie to come out like it's there's so many things that until main story people are like these main story um movies are going to come out like we were we, we just don't know you know that's yeah. that's, that's what and i'm it, feeling like and it's like all all that morbius mm. really told us was that uh, no way Holmes ending had more effects than yeah. they showed on the screen. Right. And it just kind of leads to WandaVision. It went both ways, basically. Yeah. Wanda mm -hmm. becoming the Nexus being had more effects than we saw at the end of WandaVision. And then mm -hmm. also at the end of Loki, them, uh, Kang taking over the timeline has more effects than what we're watching in the current Marvel universe. So it's just like, when the heck... Are yeah. we going to get down to it? <laughs> yeah. It because, feels like they're just going to keep doing this until it's finally like, boom, like mind blown. Right. Because apparently Kang is supposed to be like the main villain for the Ant-Man movie coming out. Right. So it's, there's, there's a lot of aspects to where Marvel is going, but at least it's going somewhere because yeah, I was, somewhere. I was honestly scared when we we lost Iron Man and, and Captain America because it's like okay where where are the minds going you know because Peter Parker ends up being one of the smartest people but he's still a kid at this point right and yeah. now like with adding you know Morbius to to and that the same effect in the Vulture yeah. like you know it's it has me hyped to see like what basically comes next because like we gotta 
they got to start answering some of these questions, bro. They got to yeah. start answering some of them. And, and like I said, it's the, that, that weird vulture mm -hmm. Morbius thing mm -hmm. with Venom potentially in that same universe. Yeah. So it's like, are they going to move away from the Marvel Spider-Man and have like a new older Spider-Man from their universe? Like, I, you have no idea. Yeah, the possibilities. But that's just from that one cutscene. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I guess technically both because it's like a dual. Yeah, because Both also, because also we got that the the Venom cutscene where we find out that like he has all the knowledge now, like basically. You know, yeah, and that symbiote symbiotes mm -hmm. hold all the information from multiple universes and all right. that type of stuff. Right. So it's like it's just weird because technically they're all interconnected already, but you're mm -hmm. just waiting to see like like what is this big plan yeah where is it yeah and so who's who's i mean i guess kang is the big bad but he's a he's still humanoid so it doesn't feel like that necessarily like as far as like on the grand scale of like we had thanos who was just like yeah giant titan right and then yeah. then then we had celestials it's like big like, bads in every yeah. like weird realm time mm -hmm. space because yeah. of the celestials like it's 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 very interesting but i'm at mm -hmm. least glad there was like a little hint of um okay, okay. yeah something <laughs> something yeah, yeah because it can't it needed like, it, i will say this though like this movie gave me early mcu vibes because i feel like that's that's kind of where we're going to end up going right now with like, like ever since eternals came out it felt like we kind of started over like uh, as far as like the the connections you know because initially like when like iron man one iron man two and stuff came out like like laying the, groundwork yeah like all of these things were kind of like just just starting but at the same time like as we continued on you started to see the pattern of things so i still well, feel like we're if we were peeking with the the main movies we're, mm -hmm. we're we're way down now we're, yeah. we're definitely in right. the doldrums like spider-man was definitely good but mm -hmm. it's kind of like the end of the spider-man series so on its way down and then like yeah now we're in those barrel movies and hopefully right. multiverse can at least hopefully tip us upwards yeah but that's hopefully. why I, but that's why i think that's why i think the the combo movies is why they're going this direction because like some of these characters, other than like their first initial origin stories, don't really hold the weight of having a fully featured film like, um, like how they do. Like that's why I'm excited for like the Marvels movies to come out. Like because it's like we're gonna get not only Captain Marvel but, um, uh, what's her name? I think from uh WandaVision. Um, ah, what is her name? Maya, Monica, Monica. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, she's supposed O'Connor. to be in that. Yeah, right. she's supposed to be in that, and then the um, Miss Marvel is coming out too soon. Yeah. So it's just like, you know. Yeah, so they'll they'll take it out for Morbius, hundred yeah. percent. But yeah, but it's like it's an L that I'm not mad about because it's like Morbius is not like Iron Man or Captain America, right? Like, yeah, I feel. I you. think the I biggest L of the MCU is the Hulk. But that's just me. Yeah, they did him dirty. That's all. I mean, those, those first Thor movies were pretty, pretty bad. But I did enjoy. But at least them. he got movies though. Yeah, he did. You know what I'm saying? Like they ain't even give my man no movies. All his stuff happened like off screen and like <laughs> in the midst of yeah. of chaos and like all this other stuff that we can't really explain. But yeah. yeah, but I think I think that's pretty much it. You got anything else for for the Morbius talk? I uh, hey, hopefully uh, Morbius comes back better. I hope Blade comes back really <laughs> good. And I hope yeah. there's some tie-in that makes me at least feel like this movie's worth a rewatch. But for mm -hmm. now, it ain't, it's not worth a rewatch ever. And if you haven't seen the movie, uh, you should just wait for it to appear on whatever streaming platform it's going to appear on. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. I second it. I second it. Um, but that's going to do it for the weekly recap. Man, let's get into the filler arc. I hope y'all enjoyed that. You know, that was a, a really dope conversation. Shout out to the homie Chris. Uh, Chris, you light on everything. 
pretty much. But uh, yeah, that joint that joint was fire. I hope y'all enjoyed that conversation. More of those are to come next. Uh, Marvel convo probably will be about Moon Knight. Um, but other than that, we got Multiverse of Madness. That's the next. That's the next movie in on the Marvel pipeline, uh, which will be dope. But uh, for the filler arc this week, I kind of just wanted to talk about um, just what's upcoming on YouTube. So basically I kind of revamped my whole channel in a sense, not in the sense of like everything's changing again, but kind of getting away from the series and focusing more on like conversations that I'm having with, with other people and just about things. So um, that includes the stream that includes just like everything that I do offline as well. Um, but you know, I got some new series that's on the way. As y'all know, I've talked about a prior, I've been watching, uh, Snowfall and I'm going to be doing a part one or season one, um, review of that hundred percent blind review of that. So that should drop on YouTube pretty soon. And then I got some hot takes that I wanted to, um, talk about from, you know, uh, uh, Twitch that I did uh, a little while ago. I think they're still pretty relevant. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> I still want to, you know, have, have those conversations as well. But those will be the start of the Hot Takes series. And then also um, some of those conversations will happen on Twitch as well. You know, I'm, I'm going to make my retirement. I'm going to stream at least once a week. I know that for sure. Monday is the goal. But sometimes, like, it just it just doesn't happen. Like, we had the national championship uh, for basketball you know what I'm saying, last Monday, so I didn't end up streaming that day, but, you know, next Monday, I'll be there, I'll, I'll probably end up streaming, like, in the next few days, if not before this comes out, um, but, you know, I'm excited for that, as far as what you can expect from the stream, so I'm basically going to be going down the YouTube rabbit hole, in a sense, because I want to find more reviews, and talk about people's perspectives as far as like the movies that you know come out so like i'm going to be doing the morbius um breakdown of like all the biggest and smallest youtube channels basically anything i find interesting um and then also giving my opinion on that along with like all the other stuff that i see you know i'm kind of trying to go in that direction um, more so than gaming specifically so if you're interested in that, definitely come through on the stream. And then we also have the the podcast go live anytime we don't have a, a guest that, you know, doesn't necessarily want to go live or just a, uh, the timings don't necessarily work out to go live for that. But anytime, you know, it's just a solo dolo, you know what I'm saying? Podcasts will do those online or on Twitch, um, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, just expect more cohesion uh, as far as the content. You're gonna see start seeing not the same thing over and over again, but bits and pieces um, from whether it's TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, um, Twitter. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to do it all, bruh. So um, I appreciate y'all for tuning into this episode. Uh, shout out to the homie Chris for always coming through. And um, yeah, I'm holla y'all next one, man. Y'all be easy, you know the vibes. Always keep it on. She goes, me boy G. I'm gone. Peace.